Hello, this is Telecom TV reporting from Mobile World Congress 2016 here in Barcelona. And I'm talking with Ian Stephen, who is with Hewlett Packard Enterprise VP and General Manager, Servers EMEA. Quite a mouthful, but I, I, I know what it means. It's good to see you again. Thank you. It's been a while. Let's talk about telecoms IT rather than just plain good old telecoms. The IT market, of course, which has run in sort of parallel with telecoms for so long now, continues to evolve on a daily basis, more or less. What major trends are we seeing now in IT in telecoms? I think we see the same trends in IT and telecoms as we see in most of our customers. The biggest difference is probably that in telecoms you've had the, the split between the network side of the business and the IT side of the business. Yeah. Whereas in most customers they don't have a network, they have something else that they run. Uh, so in, in telecoms I think the biggest challenge they face is the coming together of those two things. You have a network organisation with architectural models, you have an IT organisation with architectural models and, and the two are blending which most customers in my traditional business don't have to deal with. In that blending point, you've got all the things that you can see at the show. You've got the commoditization of technology. So, you know, more and more suppliers producing technology. You've got more and more importance of software. So trying to manage a more complicated software stack than ever, ever before. And just basically proliferation of technology every day somebody introduces a new piece of technology and, and the IT department has to cope with the introduction of that new technology. So fundamentally the same challenge is apart from this blending together of network and IT. Okay, now we're going to get onto that obviously the blending because we're talking about hybrid next. Um, hybrid infrastructure is obviously what is at play here and software defined infrastructure as well. How does Hewlett Packard Enterprise define each of those and what are the values that each bring? I think the challenge with both pieces of terminology is everybody brings their own definition <laughs> to the terminology. So I, the way I would think about it is software defined infrastructure is um, potentially aggregated or disaggregated technology, software and hardware, where when they come together the benefit is bigger than the two separate parts. So that the software taking control potentially of the hardware and telling the hardware what to do and the hardware being integrated together so you get better benefit. Hybrid to me is, is one level above that. So hybrid IT for me is the ability to take that infrastructure and that on-premise or off-premise manage it at a slightly higher level. So for example, something like a cloud environment, private or public, or a traditional data center environment where it's in a mixed environment. So the, the hybrid part for me is really one level above the infrastructure providing a bit more coordination, a bit more control, a bit more automation of the software. Thank you. How can a modern telco, Ian, how can a modern telco IT department take advantage of a hybrid and software defined infrastructure? For example, I was going to say just this. A few months ago, Hewlett Packard Enterprise announced HPE Synergy, so that must play into it. Yeah, I think the, the world of IT is, is basically diverging into two parts. You have customers who want very basic technology where they have complete control of the software environment yep. and they just want infrastructure to deploy it on. And then most customers are not in that situation where they have nothing existing and everything new. And Synergy is designed as a platform that really blends together two things. It gives you the ability to take cloud-like applications or cloud-like services and traditional applications and services and run them and deploy them and manage them on a combined environment. It really does that with three things. It, it, it has the concept of fluid resource pools. So if an application needs more storage, it gets more storage. If it needs more networking, it gets more networking. If it needs more compute, it gets more compute. It has the, the concept of a software intelligence, an intelligent software layer. And that really is around automation. So things like an image streamer, so that you can deploy things quickly. Um, and then a, a composer, which is the automation layer. And then the last things it brings then is a, a single unified application programming interface. So if you are combining those two types of work, you can actually call them from one single programming interface. And you can start then to blend the two parts. So you can blend the traditional application with new style application and call it through a single API. 
that then really brings you four benefits. You're, you're getting better use of your infrastructure, that saves money. You're more automated, that means it's faster to deploy and simpler to manage. Um, the, you have better flexibility, so if you can deploy different types of applications quickly, you can deploy more applications. Uh, and then really the speed and efficiency of the environment. So if an application needs more resource, it gets more resource. If it needs no resource, it loses resource. So it's a far more effective way to manage a customer environment. And that's really the platform that Synergy brings to a customer. Thank you. Last question. Um, what IT problems have telcos encountered when they deploy these hybrid infrastructures? And how does HPE help them get out of that? I think the biggest challenge for telecom companies and traditional customers is is the desire to be cloud-like. Everyone <laughs> talks about a cloud-like environment. They do. And, and the challenge with that is you're comparing yourself to an Amazon Web Services or a Microsoft Azure. Yeah. They started from scratch. The very greenfield operation, very software-defined, so this, all the intelligence is in the software. And most customers don't live in that world. Most customers have a legacy. Uh, and really the challenge that for a, for a customer telecom or normal is living in that world. Uh, and we kind of had two solutions to that problem. We can go bare metal style computing, if a customer wants to do that. Yeah. Or we can go with more of a composable infrastructure synergy type approach. I think what most customers have struggled with is they've tried to use traditional technology to be cloud-like. So potentially they have a large investment in a storage area network, They've tried to use that in their cloud environment. That's a very expensive way to do it. So really, I think most customers are challenged with trying to use old style technology and thinking to live in a new style world. Uh, and that's a very difficult challenge. Well, nobody wants to throw anything away, do no. they? And you see, you've got, uh, we spent money on this. It took us a long time to get it embedded in. It works. Now we're cloudifying everything, but we want to carry on using that. Well, and I think especially in the, in the hardware part of the infrastructure, whereas maybe three or four years ago, the average lifespan of a server was three years. Now it's probably five to seven years. Yeah. So not only do we want to be cloudified, but we want it to be cloudified on what we've had for the last three years, and we exactly. want to use it for the next four. <laughs> That's a very difficult thing to achieve. But can you do it? Yeah, I think with, the, with the, the, the choice of two different directions. If as a customer, you are completely in control of your software environment from top to bottom, mm -hmm. you're capable of going with a, an Amazon type environment. Very low cost commoditized hardware, storage servers and networking. Mm -hmm. um, wonderful. And we can help with that. We have a specific set of products to help with that called Cloudline. If though you're like most customers, let's say 99.5% of the <laughs> customers in the world, yep. really you're looking for a composable solution which blends technologies, makes the automation better, and, and our latest solution there is the Synergy platform. What happens in when, after the server is now living twice or more than twice as long as it did, and after the infrastructure that's already in place reaches its sell-by date, what happens then? Is it easier again because technology has moved on for cloudification and virtualization and so on? Is it or, is it, or is it a problem that just iterates itself over and over again? I think it's a problem that iterates itself over and over again. Because every time, every time you think you've brought the latest, greatest technology to bear, another piece of software, a workload yeah. comes along that consumes all its capacity. Exactly. So it's a constantly iterating environment. And I think that's the biggest challenge for a customer is trying not to get stuck in a in a, an English piece of terminology in a cul-de-sac. Yeah. Especially now, it's more and more important that you choose some fairly standardized, long-life technology, because otherwise you then have to lift and shift technology, exactly, yeah. which is very expensive. Yeah. Always, I always think of it in this way, I don't know whether you'll agree with me or not, but you, you see movies sometimes lovingly set in 1940s America, you know, pr just pre-Pearl Harbor or whatever, you get these magnificent shots, these old cars going up and down the street, but they're all in 1940 model. You know, there's nothing there, because in 1940 there were plenty from 1926, yeah. you know. So, and that's what happens in enterprises and in, and in telcos. No matter when you, where you draw the line, you will always have some legacy <laughs> and some hybrid equipment there, and that's going to continue indefinitely. And with the evolution of virtualization, you're in theory making that more possible. Yeah. Because the, the, the thing above the virtualization layer doesn't really care what's below it. So you can run it on anything. Yeah. Um, and that then becomes the real challenge, you know, running a critical workload, and, and take a telco context, 
network function virtualization as a virtualized workload. Indeed. Run that on something that's out of service, and when it falls over, you have a problem. That's it, yeah. All right. So that that um, layer of virtualization makes that challenge even bigger for customers. Interesting stuff. Ian Stephen, good to see you again, and thanks very much indeed. Thank you.